Good morning, ladies. I'm so glad to be here. Um, I wrote this uh, friendship study with you in mind, and so I'm glad you're here. Yay! I was thinking about this this morning. Um, my friend Jody and I, um, who I'm going to introduce you to later, um, she's in the acknowledgments at the bottom of the very first page. Very important to me. My friend Jody and I were um, pitching this idea as a book at one time, and one of the publishers who liked the idea but said, well, maybe there's too many on the market like this, I answered her and I said, you know, maybe I would write it as a Bible study and women could do this on their own. And she said to me, who would do that? <laughs> and I thought, well, maybe you should read my Bible study. <laughs> <laughs> so here you are. Thank you. You came. You came. Uh, we're going to spend the next season together um, navigating friendships. And we're going to be in the shallows first, and then we're going to dive into some deep waters. So if you like metaphors, this is going to be a day at the beach. Um, and I hope you'll stay with me for, count them, the first three weeks, okay? I know some of you have busy lives, challenging schedules. This is a different kind of thing for you, all this group time and the, the discipline of it and maybe the, the sharing of it or the churchiness of it. But any way you look at it, I'm asking you for three weeks. Give me three weeks and we'll take off the weight. No, no. And, uh, <laughs> and we'll give you reason to believe there's something valuable to learn in this study, which is really not my study. It's my quest to understand what is God's heart for all of our relationships. So it's the product of something that's been stirring in me. And I'm going to introduce my friend Jody. This, this study grew out of a friendship with her. I'm delighted to say she came here today so that I could introduce her. You can come on all up here. I'm proud to be her friend. She's been a mentor to me and a sister, and um, that microphone would be great, Jody. We served on a ministry team together for Hearts at Home for about 10 years, and she lived downstate in a different town than I lived in, and we got together for conferences. And um, on one particular conference, um, we were riding in a car together for six awesome hours. And um, it, during that conference time, we started to discuss things like what, uh, what we valued. And one of the things we found that we both really valued were, were our relationships with other women. And we also realized that that was not necessarily the sentiment of all women. We know many women who say, I'd rather hang out with men because they don't get so catty or deep or difficult. We, however, have found that in our lives it's been friendships with women that have helped us sustain a lot of other relationships, including the relationships with the men in our lives. And so because of that passion that I've had from, and that blessing that I've had from having really rich relationships with women, um, I have um, in, in, endeavored to be a salesman for that product to you, and Jody has helped me. Um, many people that we know used to say, "Well, what you know? What's with you two? You, you're just such you're such good friends. What makes you click?" And I got to thinking about that, Jody, and I thought, "Well, well, you know, we didn't live in the same town. We haven't known each other since childhood. We really didn't know each other's children. They weren't in sports together. We weren't in the same church together, and we didn't have a ton of common friends." But I'm going to tell you the the moment I remember that um, we went from buddies at work, which was our, our service work at Hearts at Home, to friends. And it's when Jody called me and said, I'm driving up from Springfield and you're driving down from Chicago for our Hearts at Home meeting. Would you like to stay after and have dinner? And that was the first invitation to a friendship that I consciously remember Jody giving me. And I took her up on that, and I think we're 10 or 12 or 15 years in now, aren't we? Now we do know each other's husbands and children, and we still don't have each other's kids in the same sports, or, uh, and we still don't go to the same church, but yet here she is today. So I, I really, really appreciate that. Um, Jody and I discovered a few things about the principles of friendship while we were driving along on those car rides, and we decided there are, there are some habits that you can practice, and you can actually get better at being a friend friend. Uh, Jody was raised in a highly mannered, exquisitely mannered home. Yes, she was. Yes, she was. <laughs> Boarding school and the whole thing, okay? Which blew my mind. And I was raised by regular people. 
but uh, they made pies and had people over. And so, and my dad was a salesman. So uh, we both had this um, general outlook of other-centeredness or the purpose-filled way of living to say, you're welcome here, you're welcome in my home, I see you, and so forth. And so we hung a, a talk that we were giving for a while on some principles that we knew to be true. And we had about three major categories of principles. They were the habits that expect good things to happen, and the habits that connect and make good things happen, and then the habits that reflect on what's been happening and seeing if they're okay. And so we did a talk on that, and Jody was really happy, and I wasn't because <laughs> I've never actually finished with the thing that I thought I'd done. But I, I kept saying, this is good, and I believe you, but I'm not sure I believe me. Like, why should anybody listen to me? And um, I mean, I could see that there was proof in all of this, especially in Jody's life, but um, I wanted to be sure that this was not just good natural principles or healthy principles, principles, but that they were biblical principles. And so we kind of suspended our talks for a while, and I set about for a year or more to just really dive into the best example of friendship that I know, and that is Jesus. And so this study is meant to find out do these natural habits of friendship making and keeping and reflecting that we've discovered or enjoyed come from the heart of God? And if they don't, what am I missing? And if they do, who should I tell? And so that's what this study is. So I will say this, though. When Jody and I decided to talk on the topic of friendship, at one point I remember calling her and saying, um, hey, Jody, we, we can't really talk about this until our closets are clean. We have to look at our old relationships and our current relationships and our nearby relationships and the ones we'd rather not deal with and say what's in that that doesn't match what we're trying to communicate. And we, bo we both found some junk. <laughs> we found Can some you junk. imagine? Yeah, we found, <laughs> we found some junk. And uh, so we, we prayed together a lot about some, some very specific uh, issues that we were having. I know some of you are coming here with some very specific issues with a name on them. And I'll ask you again, as, as uh, Lorene mentioned, that when you think about that, that person and that issue, that you're careful about that when you're discussing it in a group. So that you wouldn't want to be the topic of someone else's table discussion. I'm sure that that person wouldn't either. And let's reflect on what's inside of us that's making that issue unresolved. So we did that for several months, and really several years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we found out some things. And some of the things we found out is that the answers are not simple. Okay? Sometimes they seem simple. Or maybe they look simple, but they're not easy. They're not easy to make happen. And so I want you to expect correctly about, about what you're going to get out of this um, time together. You're going to get the beginning, which is why when you're told to do your study, maybe one one hour a day or 15 minutes a day as it is. This is a very palatable study for busy people. 15 minutes a day. It's best if you do that because there's something in there that can grow from that on that day that can be useful. And the culmination of it, I think you'll find a product that you can apply to every relationship that you have. We're going to stick with friendship because unlike all the other relationships that you have, the ones that are bounded by blood, like all of the people you've given birth to or who have given birth to you, or covenant, like your marriages, or professional contract, like your business associations, friends have no conditional boundaries that are natural to them. We create them. And thus, I think this may be the most authentic proving ground for that idea of unconditional friendship, unconditional love. We'll talk a lot about that as we go along. Right now I'm going to um, show you this uh, beginning of this book. And there, there's a really nice graphic of it, but it doesn't appear on our slide. <laughs> You'll have to trust me on that. The name of the book is The Middle Place by Kelly Corrigan. And within that book that Jody's going to read, and oh, Jody, I'm, I'm ahead of myself here, sorry. Um, there are some excerpts that completely define this principle, which is above us here. There are two types of people. Those who come into a room and say, well, here I am. And those that come into the room and say, oh, there you are. Which do you think is more attractive? <laughs> All right. If you think the there you are is more attractive, hint, that's the right answer. I want you to give me some there you are hands. Let me show you what that looks like. 
<laughs> All right, everybody turn to somebody and put out your jazz hands. <laughs> there you are. Hi. There you are. There you are. Oh, there you are. There you are. Oh. How did that feel? Can you feel endorphins rising up through your jazz hands? Who does not want yeah. to be her yeah. friend? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, <laughs> thank you for that, Jody. That's yeah. very nice. All right, so let me give you some characteristics of a here I am person. All right, are you ready? Now, I want you to know something about a here I am person. It may seem that a person who comes into a room and says, here I am, has confidence. But the chances are about this, uh, are like, it's likely that that person suffers from the same problem as the person who comes into the room and says, here I am. And that is, there's an external need for some affirmation. And I'm going to confess to you, that's true of all of us. What do you think I thought about this morning before I got dressed? I knew I was going to be standing up here. You know, I had, I had all kinds of these thoughts. Here I am. Do I look okay? I'm going to be accepted? Oh, the traffic was horrible when I got here, but now, now I'm entering the room. And, and, uh, my traffic was bad, but the kids were worse. Um, what if there's no seats here? What if I have to sit next to that girl? What if I don't know what they're talking about? What if I know more of what they're talking about than they know what they're talking about? <laughs> what if this is boring or saccharine or too difficult or too long or too fast or too slow? too loud. What if I don't like the music or the leader or the food? And what if um, nobody notices me or everybody looks at me? Why am I here? A here I am person says, why am I here? I'm not sure what this means here. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Love me some technology. All right. Here's what a there you are person says. Are you ready? I'm not, apparently. There you are. Oh, this is where I hoped I'd see you. Oh, there, look, here's a seat right next to me. Come on. Oh, can I get you some coffee? This should be interesting, don't you think? I mean, even if I've heard this stuff before, there's probably something else I can learn from this. I think this subject, or that woman, or that place, or that story is going to be interesting. I've never heard that song, but I like the words and the way they sing it. I'll probably meet somebody new. It'll be okay. And I might even see an old friend there. And there she is. There you are. No doubt in the world that there is a difference, and it's a good difference. And it's one that we should um, practice. So now Jody, my friend Jody. She is going to read an excerpt from this book, which does have a picture. And this is from the book by Kelly Corrigan called The Middle Place. Jody and I were in the middle of reading it together, um, which is a thing friends do. I know there's some book studies out there. And I remember that we would call back and forth, and she'd say, did you see that thing on page 11? Oh, did you read that part about? And I just love that. And then we came across this piece. I love how, or we both do, love how Kelly Corrigan speaks of her there you are dad and um, he affectionately refers to Kelly his daughter as lovey and we both were so captured by this description she had of a there you are dad I think people like him because his default setting is open delight he's prepared to be wowed by your humor your smarts your white smile even your handshake Guaranteed, something you do is going to thrill him. Something is going to make him shake his head afterward in disbelief and say to me, Lovey, what a guy. Or, Lovey, isn't she terrific? People walk away from him feeling like they're on their game, even if they suspect that he put them there. He does that for me, too. He makes me feel smart, funny, beautiful. He told me once that I was a great talker. And so I am. Jody and I are both tearing up about that because we lost our dads recently. 
and our dad's opinion of us mattered. And when someone tells you you're great, you want to be great, especially if that person is great. And that's what a there I am kind of person does. So I'm going to introduce you to somebody who I think um, exemplifies. Oh, well, let's, let's go through this list of some of these attributes of a here I am versus there you are person. A here I am person says it's me first. Says my needs, my history, my success, my future are, are what's on the table here. That's what I came to talk about. A there you are person says, it's you first. Your needs, your history, your successes, your future. That's what's on my agenda. I want to introduce you to a there you are guy I know. Anybody notice anything about his hand position? That's the greatest example of a there you are person that there ever was in history. In fact, Jesus is the perfect and only perfect example of a there-you-are person that ever lived. And when we strive to become like him, we become the friend we want to have. And so the purpose of our time together for the next nine weeks is to learn more about him so that we look more like him, so that we behave more like him. And when we wonder what Jesus would do in a certain circumstance, I can tell you where you'll find out. You can find out where it's all written down, where Jesus did do it. And so if you're new to Bible study, and I hope some of you are, I want to reassure you that the books we're going to dive into are the ones that are probably somewhat familiar to you culturally anyway. They are the four books of the, of the Bible, often referred to as the Gospels, beginning with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And all of the study that you're going to be in right now is going to take you where I want, went when I wanted to know, is this stuff relevant that I'm saying? Is it true? Is it biblical? Is it worth passing on? So we're going to stay right there in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John this whole time, except for next week. And next week, you're going to start where it's real easy in the beginning, which is in the book of Genesis with chapter 1. So outside of next week's little foray into the first chapter, we're going to spend the whole time in the Gospels. Now, for those of you who are our group leaders and study leaders, uh, table leaders, in the back, there are some other um, references to, to stories and scriptures and truths that are in the Bible in other places that amplify or exemplify the same principle. But, but for the purposes of our individual study, we're going to stay in the Gospels. And, you, and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were contemporary eyewitnesses of Jesus. They were on site in the space that he occupied. Some disciples, some maybe second tier or third tier witnesses or disciples in his, in his realm. You will hear from them the eyewitness accounts of his behavior. Sometimes they'll baffle you. Sometimes they'll be clear and enriching. That's good. I would ask you to think about these readings that I give you that are simple that you can do in 15 to 30 minutes a, 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 a night, if not less, um, and go a little far be, farther beyond them. Check the context that I've referenced. Check the application maybe in another version. If you're well enough versed in the Bible to say, I think that's also in Luke, go there. Or if your footnote in your study Bible indicates that this also, this story is also in Mark, go there. See what Jesus says from the points of view of different people who wrote down his story. It's all good, and I'll tell you why. If it doesn't work, if it's not true, call me up. We have whiteout, and we'll use it. We do not want to step outside the truths that Jesus has given us, because when we do, we set ourselves up for potentially part-time human success, but we miss the sweetest spot of all, which is the spot that Jesus provides for us in his friendship. So... When you come to this study, give me, like I said, give me three weeks to find out if your relationships matter. And I think they do, otherwise you wouldn't be here. And I know, like I said, these principles, because they're biblical and because they're about Jesus and others, are going to apply to all of the other relationships that you have. And find out if you can become the friend you want to be and to have. And I will tell you this, as Jody and I indicated, it's 
There are some things you'll dig up and they'll take some time to look at. Together, in good relationship with another woman, you might, you might get some honesty that you might not find for yourself. She might be able to tell you, when you did that, you sort of left the impression that, or when you talk that fast and interrupt her, she feels like. These sorts of things are helpful for you to make corrections, but they're not gonna happen in nine weeks. They're gonna happen until you get to eternity when unconditional love is presented to you as mercy and grace, and then you can live it out more fully. But let's try to get as close as we can, shall we? And um, I, want you to, I want you to see if you can find out if God is relevant to you, and more importantly, to know how relevant you are to him.